Welcome to another episode of Coaching Football with Brian Clee. Episode 8 is going to launch a 10-part series about playing defense with a 3-4 multiple front and split safety pattern match coverages. Going to start off with coverages first because I really believe those are more important when you set up your defensive scheme. Ultimately, secondary and perimeter play determines if a defense gives up an explosive player score, um, whether it's run or pass. Once again, the, the goal of this channel is to grow the game of football that has blessed me with so many opportunities to work with other coaches as, as we guide and mentor student athletes in their development and, and growth as young men. So with that in mind, I, I'm hoping that this episode and other episodes are, are able to help younger or lesser experienced coaches grow their knowledge of the game and increase their confidence as they take on the responsibility of, of leading the young men that they're about to coach. So with that in mind, I, I think it's really important to understand that just because we use a 3-4 defense or, or somebody else uses one high versus two high split safeties or um, that somebody prefers pattern match coverages doesn't mean it's it's necessarily the best or it's the best for you. Each and every coaching staff and situation is different. Um, take away from this video what can help you as a coach grow, what can help most importantly the, the current coaching staff you are on in, in whatever role you're in, whether you're an assistant coach in a position or a coordinator or, or a head coach. And then last and most importantly, actually actually diagnose and, and determine is, is this something I can successfully in, implement with my players because if it if it can't do that then it's not a good scheme for you and your situation I'd like to give special thanks in this episode to my head coach Joe Stevens he also coaches our defensive backs and um, a lot of what I understand about coverages and, and have actually ex experienced is, is thanks to him giving me an opportunity to be the defensive coordinator here at Coloma High School the last five years. Also want to give uh, thanks and, and recognize the assistant coaches on the high school staff right now. Uh, Kurt Mead's been with Coach Stevens and I for all five of the years coaching the JV and and just kind of any position we ask him to coach. Um, Todd Smith has has worked with our defensive line and improved us in in that area of greatly. And then um, Tim Reb has has been an inside linebacker coach for us and, and really increased the discipline and, and effectiveness of those guys. I'd also indirectly like to thank Jerry Gordon. Um, whose book on the underfront has, has definitely influenced and, and shaped my defensive philosophies and, and a lot of stuff that I've copied directly from there. And then thanks to uh, all the coaches, whoever you are, and especially many colleagues out there on, on Coach Huey. So without further ado, here's episode eight. We're going to get into a playbook overview of the coverages we use, how we go about coaching them, and, and how we go about installing them. Real quickly, I want to cover our defensive philosophy. As a younger coach, this part would typically bore me uh, initially. Um, and then as I've gained more experience coaching, this is probably the most important part of coaching. Uh, explaining and, and having a rationale for what you do and, and more, more importantly, why you do it. So for you younger coaches out there, um, take some time and and develop your philosophy off of your experiences and, and us more experienced coaches, we, we kind of understand that, hey, we know a b bunch of schemes, but we are choosing this one, and, and here's our reason why. Um, our philosophy begins with the principle that every defense must play with all 11 defenders to cover the horizontal and vertical threats of an offense, whether it is the run game, pass game, play action pass, or a run pass option that the offense chooses. Um, you need to be able to match it very soundly and with good leverage. Each defender must have clear keys with simple yet sound reads and reactions based off those keys. Greater simplicity allows defenders to play faster, attack downhill, defeat blocks, pursue the ball carrier, and, and be in position to make tackles. 
Uh, most importantly, playing fast stresses the execution of the offense, leading to more missed blocks and swarming gang tackles. As, as much as we coach block destruction, I think having an unmatched level of energy when that guy comes to block you, uh, that'll defeat the block. The, the, the guy will miss the block because you show up a little faster than he expected. Our coverage philosophy begins with the idea that Every coverage has strengths and weaknesses. Cover three provides a post safety protecting the deep middle of the field, closing that deep middle. Um, cover two allows for aggressive defense of the flats, gets a corner up there, making sure that, that it's a no-fly zone in the flats. Both cover three and cover two, though, can struggle against four verticals without some small adjustments. That's where cover four is, is definitely the strongest against four verticals especially in my opinion um, but it has weaknesses uh, that cover three and cover two doesn't number one it, it doesn't have that post safety close in the middle of the field it's a middle of field open um, coverage and then against some formations especially uh, wider splits typically um, for most teams, an outside linebacker is the curl to flat defender. So if you get some sort of play action, it's especially weak against throws to the flats. Um, cover one, whether it's a, a free safety concept or a robber safety concept, and then cover zero man at times becomes necessary when wide splits limit the ability of defenders to help each other. Um, man coverage in the end can really struggle at times defending tight splits where rub or pick routes are more likely. Um, and then it also can struggle covering some crossing routes. We base out of a too high split safety shell because it gives our safeties a single key with simple yet sound reads and reactions. Goes back to our overall defensive philosophy of, of keep it simple yet sound. Um, we prefer to utilize four defensive backs on almost all snaps to have the versatility to align to multiple offensive formations. We're not a, a five defensive back team um, because we feel we need outside linebackers ready to match up against tight ends. Um, we're not a three defensive back team because we don't want to put an outside linebacker in a situation where he's got to carry a vertical. Um, being a too high shell in the end doesn't require our outside linebackers who are our overhang players to have to match vertical routes without safety help and instead it lets us prioritize coaching those outside linebackers fundamentals for defending the run our schedule is, is run heavy only one of our nine opponents threw the ball more than they ran the ball um, and we need those outside linebackers to make sure we stop the run game first Lastly, and most importantly, especially for you younger, less experienced coaches, um, both myself and my head coach, Joe Stevens, who coaches our defensive backs, we know how to coach two high split safeties. We pattern match because it allows us to keep better leverage against both formations and then especially post-snap route distributions. We can be cover four against vertical and, and crossing concepts. We can end up being cover two against condensed formations or um, to aggressively play the flats against a, a spread type formation when, when they throw screens and, and quick games out there. Um, and then we can be cover one or cover zero when receivers splits limit a safety's ability to provide a corner help. We prefer to play our defense with the field side and boundary side. We still cross train our players to do both field and boundary to have the versatility with personnel for, for a variety of decision, reasons. Um, maybe it's a hurry up situation, maybe injuries. Uh, you know, if you're at a smaller school, um, that, that boundary outside linebacker who started there, if the, the, field outside linebacker gets injured, a, a lot of times that boundary outside linebacker is better than the backup, him moving to the field side, and, and the backup moving to boundaries is, is sometimes the better option. Um, in the end, by playing a field and boundary side, we can try to get the more athletic, maybe quicker defenders in more space to the field side. So 
field side. Um, we'll have the corner, the free safety, our stud linebacker, our Mac linebacker. We'll see some diagrams coming up shortly. Boundary side, corner, uh, a deeper down safety, uh, Bob linebacker, and Will linebacker. Um, corners, we won't always be field boundary. If, if they're both equal in ability, we'll play left, right. Um, and then there's sometimes we'll put a corner um, if they put their top receiver uh, as a as a number one receiver, a wide a wide receiver, um, a corner will follow him. And lastly, before we get into some coverage with our, our secondary, our, our linebackers will always match three receivers from inside to outside and from short to deep. Uh, and we refer to this as our 2-3-2 two, two rules. So first diagram, two is out of the backfield. This would be on the, the single receiver side of trips. The Mac linebacker, our inside linebacker, is going to match that route. Uh, one of the two inside linebackers will always be responsible for defending and matching the final three receivers. So if we get a vertical in this situation, that will linebacker is going to reroute it and, and carry it to the safety. And then an outside linebacker is going to match the uh, two receiver. Here, uh, a mesh uh, crossing concept. Again, they're, they're matching the final 2-3-2 two, two, uh, from, from inside to outside and from short to deep. So outside linebacker, his job is to match the final two. Um, his two starts the cross. Uh, our inside linebacker is responsible for controlling three. Three's to the flats fast, so he's, he's going to yell push. That tells the outside linebacker, um, push and expand, sink. And, and get depth, keep leverage on three, who is becoming the new two. Um, two's crossing, so we're also going to get a, a, a cross call here um, that alerts that will linebacker, hey, it's something's crossing, crosser going, crosser coming is, is something we coach our inside linebackers, outside linebackers to deal with on a very regular basis here. Um, so that crosser becomes the final two on our Will linebacker side, and the Mac linebacker, what was originally the, the one on the weak side, becomes the final number three that the Mac linebacker needs to match. And, and regardless of the coverage, unless we get linebackers blitzing, um, we're, we're teaching these rules in our underneath coverage all the time. Our coverage checks begin based on the number of detached receivers. So if we're in match, if, if I've called match, the defensive secondary is going to check the coverage based on the number of detached receivers. If there's zero detached receivers, we're calling hard, we're going to be in cover two. One detached receiver, we're in a man's concept. If there's an outside linebacker available in the coverage, it's going to be cover one. If there's no outside linebacker, it's going to be cover zero. Um, against two detached receivers, we're in read. We could be cover four, cover two, based on the release of the number two receiver. I'll get into that in more detail in the next couple slides. And then against three detached receivers, um, we'll game plan this some. Uh, we have the ability, we'll, we'll play a, a stress, which is cover four to it, um, and then we can overload it with cloud or sky coverage. So cover two, when, when we make a hard call here, um, it's against zero detached receivers, could be a nub tight end, could be a wing tight end. Uh, hard cover two is a split safety inside, outside, and, and high, low zone coverage that we play against tight splits. So it could even be a, like a nasty split end in, in a slot. Um, the safety and corner match up the high and low route. The safety is going to align somewhere between 8 and 10 yards deep based on scouting and, and 1 yard inside the number 2 uh, and going to match routes up or in. The corner is going to be 5 yards deep by 5 yards outside number 1 and match routes um, outside or low. And the corner always has to carry a wheel. That's, that's a concept that any pattern match coverage ends up using is that the flat defender needs to carry a wheel. So our alignment, um, 
there it is corner five by five five by four um safety is is eight ten ten by one inside two on both sides um there you go if we make a man call uh that's against one detached receiver typically a pro type look um it's a split safety man coverage but underneath it's it's going to play with some zone principles um, and we're using against wide splits. Typically, if, if the number one and number two receiver, if they're splits of 10 yards or more, um, that's going to be the call our safety or corner makes. Uh, safety line eight yards deep by two yards inside of number two. Uh, and again, based on uh, scouting reports, we might back them up to 10 yards, maybe even 12. Um, he must key... Uh, the block of number two, and, and especially when number two is a tight end, can can pin our outside linebacker inside. Um, corners preferably press number one with inside leverage, but we also let them at certain downs and distances play off at about six yards of depth and two yards inside. So uh, this ends up being our alignment against two back situations. Again, one detached receiver one detached receiver, um, corners are in press, safety uh, in this drawing is, is 10 by two off of number two, and then our, our down safety here on the boundary side, uh, he's walked up and he's uh, five by four off of that tackle. When we check to read, um, it's cover four or two against all the det two detached sets so typically a twins or or maybe they got twins on both sides what we call doubles um split safety matchup zone coverage with matchups based on the release of the number two receiver in the end that two receiver can only do one of four things um release vertically yeah, we make a seam call and the, the match is going to play out cover four uh if he releases outside immediately and, and we define that as did the curl flat defender did our outside linebacker or into the boundary side of inside linebacker did they get hands on number two for a reroute if the answer is no we should be calling alert the match is going to end up being cover two uh, and then an inside release we're making a cross call the match is going to play out cover four and then lastly um, if that number two receiver crack blocks the outside linebacker turns his shoulders completely, that's telling at least the safety it's time to crack the replace. So our alignments, again, our, our safety is about 8 to 10 yards deep based on the scouting report by 2 yards inside of number 2, and the responsibility is understanding um, the weakness of a too high shell is defending the post, so their rule is to never have his face crossed. And, and that's the reason for the two yards inside leverage. Corner aligns six yards deep by one yard outside of number one, so he's got vision of the entire field, the entire formation, um, and his responsibility is to play on top and outside. Um, again, because our safety is so focused and his job is to take away the post. He's always inside leverage. So our corner is going to be outside leverage. And, and that lets us match up a flag route by number two really, really well, where the safety is going to be inside of it and the corner is going to be outside of it. And, and again, this is eliminating a weakness of playing only cover two, where the corner is going to play a, a deep quarter um, based on the release of number two. Our outside linebacker is going to align in the apex of the offensive tackle in number two at five yards, and he plays two one three rules, which means I, I reroute number two and, and get my read off of him. I'm listening to the safety and corner, and I also begin to understand the releases. As I'm rerouting two, I'm going to get eyes out to one, so I know what one is doing. If two and one are both vertical, I got to be ready to play a, a number three. Uh, receiver either something coming out of the backfield or a crossing route from the other side and then the inside linebacker controls the final three and the most important call he makes that our linebackers got to understand is is calling out push to let that outside linebacker know hey there's a fast three 
push yourself through the route, route of two in the seam and, and sink and get depth and, and be able to match that running back or uh, maybe a third receiver um, to the flats. So quick summary, uh, corner, he's got a seam, he's going to sink and match one vertical or two on a flag. If two is out, we're calling alert, he's going to match two with outside leverage, typically like a bubble or arrow, and again, we're defining um, an alert as our seam defender didn't get hands on number two. And then two crossing, our corner's going to sink and squeeze one, uh, whether that's a post or a vertical route with outside leverage. The safety, um, always at least inside two, can typically play maybe even in the apex of the offensive tackle and, and number two. Um, he's going to be primary force on crack replace. When two's on a seam, he's matching two deep with inside leverage. When we get an alert, his eyes are going to go out to the one receiver immediately. And again, he's going to match that one receiver now because that's the only vertical threat left with inside leverage. And then if two crosses, sink and help, going to be inside leverage on a, a post from number one or, or a deep crossing route of some sort. So our alignments when we're in read, um, we're keying number two, corner six by one out. Safety is 10 by at least two inside. Uh, stud linebacker is in the apex on the boundary side. Typically a inside linebacker because there's less space. Um, Got to make sure you close the A gap and leave the open B gap. But uh, we're keying number two over there again, and, and we're mirroring the alignments 10 by two by the deep safety and six by one by the corner. Stress, which is cover four against trips. Um, it's a split safety zone coverage. The big difference between it and, and our other coverage calls is there's, there's no alert. It, when we check to our stress, we're not going to run an alert. We're still going to use seam and cross calls and, and the rules that go with those. Um, corner's going to back up a little bit. He's 8 by 10 yards deep, splitting number 2 and number 1. Um, he's understanding that the curl defender is going to carry 2 until the flats are threatened, and, and that's the other big difference here. Um, the safety is 10 by 12 yards deep by 1 yard inside of number 3. Again, since it's cover 4, that, that safety's priority is, is not to give up the post and not get his face crossed. He understands that the, the hook defender will play underneath the three receiver, but only after getting a read, read of a, a pass out of his key. Um, the outside linebacker is going to play in the curl and is, is late to the flats, and, and we don't necessarily use that language. Right now, he, he understands he needs to be able to carry two vertical until he knows something has either gone to the flats or or broken off to the inside a uh, crossing route. The inside linebacker is, is going to be hooked to curl and again that just means number three is going to tell you what to do um, with your with your match. So our alignments um, begins with with keying that number three receiver from our outside linebacker um, in this case the field side so he's keying the release of three. If three crosses or goes vertical, that stud linebacker is got to match the vertical of, of two. If three goes out, if uh, two crosses, um, now the stud linebacker can match a, a short route, sink, and expand to something to the flats. So three goes out, eyes go to two, he, he tells me what I need to do. Um, two goes vertical, I can reroute him, pass him off to the safety, three goes out, two does some sort of cross. I can again maybe get a reroute if he goes too flat. I'm, I'm not going to go chase him. I'm going to expand with three, keep leverage on it, and play the flats. The, the corner is keying what that number two receiver does. If that two receiver is in the seam, we get a seam call. 
corners are going to keep sinking and, and split to two and favor that number two receiver a little bit as as he sinks and force that quarterback to make the th throw to number one on, on a vertical. So if we get three verts, um, our, our corner split in two and one, the outside linebacker is going to carry the vertical two. Um, number three receiver will get walled by the inside linebacker and, and the safety's keeping inside on top leverage on it. Our primary adjustment against three receivers is going to be cloud, lets us aggressively defend the flats, can use it against any three receiver surface, but ideally the split of one or two should be about eight yard yards or less. Um, it is our overload matchup zone coverage where we're going to get five over the three receivers on a trip side by, by taking the backside safety and, and using him so that way we can play it very similarly to our, our read matchup cover four two. Our, our corner, just like in read, is going to be six by one outside one. He's sinking um, and dropping until he gets alert from two or three. The front side safety is going to be ten by one inside two. He's in that position because he, he needs to be able to cover the number one receiver after an alert from two or three. Backside safety is 10 by zero in the apex of, of three strong and two weak. He has to be able to get out over number two after an alert by the number three receiver. And then just like in our read coverage, the outside linebacker is going to wall and reroute and match the final two. The inside linebacker is going to wall and match the final three. So keys, again, we're reading two and three for an alert. The second the corner reads an alert, so maybe three is on a bubble or an arrow. He's going to match that with outside leverage in the flats. The stud linebacker should be rerouting two, getting eyes to one as three goes out. And then the front side safety has to be able to get over number one for like a fake bubble go. Um, and the back side safety, as three goes out, his eyes should be going to two, and, and he's matching uh, a vertical post by two stud and the Mac, the outside and inside, they're working to reroute and carry seams by three and two. If two would end up alerting, same thing, corner matches it outside leverage. The outside linebacker gets eyes to one for some sort of in dig type thing. And again, the front side safety is matching that number one. The backside safety if three stays vertical, he's responsible for that. Again, he's he doesn't want to get his face crossed and, and give up the post to the backside where he probably isn't getting any help. And he should have underneath help from our inside linebacker. The weakness in cloud coverage is, is obviously that corner to the single side is on an island by himself. Sky is another adjustment that we can use against three receivers that lets us aggressively force in the alley with one of our safeties. Typically going to use it when the split of one and two is, is greater than 10 yards. Once again, it's, it's an overload matchup zone coverage that's used in the backside safety, but now it's so that way it can play very similar to our, our hard or our cover two. The big difference between Sky and what we call hard is the corner is going to be out and play two by one inside of one and be man to man. The backside safety is going to play exactly like he would in hard, but now he's 10 by one inside of three instead of being inside of two. He's matching two or three in and up, which is his same rules when he's in hard. Front side safety is five by five outside of two. He's, he's walked up and he's matching two or three out and up. That alignment and those rules are identical to our corner when we're in our hard cover two. So there are the alignments. One is, is manned on, uh, manned by the corner, excuse me. Um, corner can be two by one in pressing or if down in distance game situation or game plan dictates, he can be six by two inside, but he's, he's manned up on one. 
the free safety because it's to the field is, is walked down. He's five by five off a of number two. And then our, our deep safety from the boundary is 10 by one off of number three. And then we're obviously singled up on the backside in some way, shape, or form. When we overload, we'll be calling peel or curl to cover the backside. Peel is going to be our man coverage between a linebacker and the corner. Either the inside or outside linebacker, they're going to communicate with each other and they're going to be man to man on the back. The corner is going to be manned up on number one. Curl is our way of playing zone back there where either the inside or outside linebacker is going to hang in the curl area. He's playing the in of two and one. The corner will be seven by three inside of one. He's playing the up or out of one and two. If both one and two are up, if they're both vertical, he's going to sink and split them very similar to the way he does uh, between one and two uh, on the trip side. Man with the inside linebacker is what I prefer to do in, in long yardage situations, downs and distances, uh, third and fourth or long. Um, ultimately, I like to be able to have that outside backer on that side be setting a hard edge and containing the quarterback in the pocket while the inside linebacker uh, mans up the running back. Um, like to man up with the outside linebacker on, on kind of run downs and distances um, just because it, it lets the inside linebacker focus uh, more on his, his run key and, and make sure he has vision on the on the guard and then the outside linebacker will peel with the, the swing of the running back. And lastly curl. Um, we do it more with the inside linebacker, definitely could do it with the outside linebacker, um, but in the end, those linebackers, they're hanging in the curl and they're looking to play the in. Primarily, this would be an answer if, if off of scouting. We know they like to get the running back out on a wheel a lot and, and try to pick the corner or, or get the corner sucked inside on, on some sort of maybe slant or a, a snag sit-down route and, and end up trying to get that running back vertical and, and take that shot and we want the corner matched up on the deep route and the linebacker on the shorter route again if, if both would go vertical the corner is going to sink and split both and we'll get the inside linebacker uh, walling and, and carrying the vertical of the inside threat um, thanks for checking out the the playbook overview uh, next episode, it'll be in the, the link down below at, at some point here, is, is going to be how we actually match up against a, a couple route distributions. So check that out when it shows up, and thanks again. As always, guys, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Check me out and follow me on Twitter at Coach Klee. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. And if you have uh, anything that maybe requires a longer response, Hit me up at coachbrianclee at gmail.com. Thanks as always for tuning in. See you again.